Hello, hello, hello. Hi. Welcome. Hi, everyone. We'll let people roll in and connect to audio so everyone can hear. Okay, let's get started. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome. My name is Asitan Kulubali, um, and I will be one of your hosts for this evening um, and moderators for this conversation. Um, I am a co-founding member of the House of Glitter Dance Company and am a member of the Glitter Goddess Art Collective. Um, and so super excited to be here um, with you all to engage in this conversation on um, community organization and really planting these seeds for for change um, and creating community together um, and really excited once again to be here present with y'all. Yeah, um, my name is Anthony. Um, as an artist known as AM, um, I'm also a member of the Glitter Goddess Collective and House of Glitter Dance Company. Super excited to be here. Um, to get us kicked off, we're gonna bring us into a meditation mindful moment. Um, so we'll invite you to Get comfortable if you're not seated, maybe take a seat wherever you are um, and we'll take some breaths together. I'll invite you to open up the chest, maybe roll the shoulders back. I'll invite you to close your eyes or find a soft gaze. A breath for the ancestors that we each bring to this space and that guide us with their wisdom every day. Breathing in and gently release. A breath to honor yourself for showing up to this call today, to show up to support community. Breathing in. And out. A breath of recognition for the indigenous people who have been here on this land since before colonization, breathing in. And release. And a breath to honor the panelists and every individual on this call and those in the future uh, seeing this archive, breathing in, coming back to the screen on the exhale. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so once again, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, and thank you so much to our Glitter Goddess sister, um, Dr. Lori Schur right here. Um, we are truly honored to be a part of this conversation and we're so grateful that you invited us into this conversation. Um, we are both uh, community organizers in Providence, Rhode Island. Um, Am also works for a youth organization. I also work with youth um, at a performing arts school. Um, and we also do a lot of community community organizing through the House of Glitter Dance Company and our uh, Providence Glitter Goddess Collective. Um, and so being a part of this conversation is going to be um, also really exciting for us to get an opportunity to share our perspectives and, and facilitate a conversation with the community that we have present here and with our amazing panelists that we have. Um, so again, Thank you for being here. Welcome to um, our panel on planting seeds for change. Um, and thank you so much to everyone that we have here for um, being willing and open to joining in this conversation, um, for taking the step to being present for community organization and for showing up. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so just to give a little bit of info about um, House of Glitter and just the collaboration between us in this event um, and in support of a House of Glitter. 
I'm going to share a video um, that will just tell you a little bit more about our fundraiser. Um, give me a moment. Can you all see the video? Yes. The historical fantasy of Isaac Hopkins is a multimedia dance concert, graphic novel, curriculum, and community ritual. And we need your help to make it happen. For the past year, the House of Glitter Dance Company has been living, breathing, revolutionizing, and creating in the former home of Isaac Hopkins, commander of the slave ship Sally, thanks to our two-year Parkist artist residency with the Providence Parks Department and the Providence Department of Art, Culture, and Tourism. The House of Glitter Dance Company works through dance to shift the energetic center of the universe towards liberation. Our rehearsal process is our community work. During our first year here in the park, we coordinated mutual aid of over $12,000 in direct COVID-19 relief and created youth, elder, and community service stipends. By supporting this project, we are supporting BIPOC youth, elders, and artists to create and perform with us. You're supporting free and donation-based meditation, yoga, and Afro-Latinx dance classes for the community, schools, and youth programs. You're supporting our free and donation-based programming in the Liberation Garden, an outdoor community earth space for intergenerational art making, learning, and environmental justice organizing. And you're supporting our work to disrupt the historical archives, to make it known in time and space that there are stories missing from the pictures we painted of Isaac Hopkins, to remember that our daily lives are history in the making, to imagine what life would be like today if colonization and slavery never happened, to rehearse for a world that centers healing, care, and community. The historical fantasy of Isaac Hopkins is a protest demonstration against the system that tells us that the name and home of Isaac Hopkins should continue to be preserved, commemorated, and memorialized. We are choreographing for the revolution. So um, for more information on the House of Glitter um, and to support our project, The Historical Fantasy of Isaac Hopkins, you can visit houseofglitter.org. House is spelled H-A-U-S, houseofglitter.org. Um, I think I can put that in the chat as well. I can't, but if that could be popped in the chat, it would be awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, um, once again, uh, thank you for inviting us to be a part of this conversation. Um, without further ado, we would love to give it uh, over to our panelists to really give them an opportunity to share their perspectives with us, share their community organization experience um, and their activism with us as well. Um, so we are joined by uh, four panelists, five panelists, excuse me, um, who are joining us today. Um, we have Miss Denise Robbins and her son, Reverend Tony, joining us. We have Miss Sasha Allenby. We have Dr. Lori Schur, um, and we have Vin Vincenzo Candela, I'm sorry. Um, and uh, so I would love to turn it over to our first panelist, um, Miss Denise and her son, Reverend Tony, to talk to us a little bit about who they are as community organizers and what they do. Um, and so I would love to hand the mic over to y'all. Thanks, everyone. Um, my name is Miss Denise Robbins. Um, I am a community organizer for the Coney Island Lighthouse Mission. Uh, we're located in Brooklyn, in the Coney Island area. Um, I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. Um, I'm a widower um, and I have four children. I'm a believer in the Christian faith and their values, um, but I am, I am empowered uh, by uh, compassion, um, supporting what I care about, 
and um, making a difference in my community. Um, my journey began at the Coney Island Lighthouse Mission uh, 2004. I'm presently there to 2021. And um, I um, started as a volunteer at the Coney Island Lighthouse Mission in the pantry sector um, as a volunteer for three years. Uh, and um, it was a privilege and still is a privilege to be a part of the community out here where we try to reach out to those that are in need um, with food insecurities. And um, I just want to pass, let my son say a little bit because I only got five minutes. So <laughs> All right, hi, um, God bless everybody. My name is Minister Tony. Obviously you guys know this is my mom. Some people may never believe that, but yes, mm -hmm. that's my mother. Let me take this gum out. And um, I've been at the Lighthouse Mission for since like around 2011 or 12. Um, I became a junior pastor there in 2019 um, until right now. And um, we, uh, we meet the needs of the people in the community. We serve um, excuse me? close to 3,000. Oh, we serve to close to around 3,000 people per month. And um, every Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we're giving out food, cooked food and dry food to people in the community. Um, we are faith-based organization first, we're church first, and um, we're here to meet the needs of the people. And we're um, open to helping, um, joining other people to help the people in the community that needs it. Um, I see there's a lot of different organizations on here, and um, we can talk a little bit later about join, um, joining and um, working together. Um, I have worked with Nick before. Nick has came down and painted the gate. He also came down with Cosmos and um, did the turkey drive. And um, yes, and we're just looking forward to um, you know working with you guys to see where um, we can all fit in and and help the people that 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 need it. You know, it's crazy times right now with you know COVID nineteen. It looked like it's ending. You know, hopefully God is ending this right now. Probably tomorrow, so we go come together again, the power and unity. And um, the people need us. The kids need us. Um, people need us. And um, that's it, you know, that's all. And you can find us, our page on uh, Facebook, the Kuniana Lighthouse Mission. Um, you could go on Facebook into the search bar. You can also find us on Twitter, at uh, Kuniana Lighthouse Mission. Um, I'll put all that stuff in the chat for you guys just a little bit later. Um, anything else you wanna add? Yes, um, Do you, you know, and I would like to thank um, Nick and Lori for all they have done for the Kuniana Lighthouse Mission. Yes, Lori. Um, as far as with the uh, helping to connect us with the cosmos, um, they have been a tremendous blessing to our cause out here in our community, and that's to help people that are in need. Um, I've known Nick since uh, 2018. Uh, actually, Stephen, he he had gave me a call one day, you know, asking, you know, if he can come to our to our um, bring his, his students to our uh, after school program to help volunteer. And, um, you know, they were, they were really good. They were really good. Um, Nick has been a tremendous help to a lot of people out here and he's behind the scenes. A lot of people don't know how much he has contributed through the Cosmos in collaboration to help the Coney Island Lighthouse Mission. Um, Nick has reached out to the Cosmos. They had uh, set up a donation um, site on their page to help us during the pandemic. Uh, you know, I'm not going to give out. I'm Nick. I know he doesn't want to get all. Get, he doesn't want me to give him all of the credit, but I must say, you know, through Nick, he has helped us out a lot at the Coney Island Lighthouse Mission from 2017 to through 2020 pandemic, Nick has been there. Um, if it wasn't for Nick, we wouldn't have um, Mario Santani, Santini um, painting a mural on our gate, um, which poured a lot of light to the people that were collecting food at our pantry distributions that we had um, going on during, during the COVID. Um, he helped us with Thanksgiving donations and collaborations with the Cosmos, um, Christmas donations, you know, um, I can go on and on. He has done so much, even in our after school program,
helping us get uh, computers, donated computers yeah. for our school yeah. program. Children, it's just a list of things that he has he has done, and that comes to show you through collaboration and unity. You know, we can help one another in times of need. So um, I just want to leave that there, Tony. If you have anything. Um, no, that's about it. I would love to get to know everybody else that's that's on this um, Zoom call today. And um, you can always reach us um, on Facebook. You go, um, I believe you have my mom contact. Or I will put all my information in there. I will send it to Nick as well and Lori. Um, okay, so God bless everybody. And we would like to hear from the next. Thank you so much for that. Um, so our next panelist, uh, Sasha, if you wanted to introduce yourself. Hello, and, and thank you both. Uh, it was great to hear from you guys. I've heard a lot about, about Lighthouse, so it's great to hear from you guys. And yeah, I'm from an organization called EV Loves NYC, which stands for East Village Loves NYC. We started uh, just in the first few weeks of the pandemic, actually. We're just coming up on our one year anniversary here. And um, we actually started because we've got an incredible friend who is this kind of like badass Latinx priest who uh, is over in Queens. Before the pandemic, myself and my partner, Mamad, my co-founder, he we'd cooked a few things in our kitchen to send to his soup kitchen. And so we'd made that connection in that way. And then a couple of weeks into the pandemic, he called us and he was like, look, all the restaurants where we usually get the food for our projects have closed down. There's no, there's no restaurants for us at the moment. The, the city is not helping us out and there is a dire need for cooked food. And so I think what he thought we might do in our kitchen is cook up a little bit more food like we had done pre-pandemic, but we got bigger ideas. Uh, and we kind of like had this idea and this sense that if we called it, called our project EV Loves, like East Village Loves, it started off EV, EV Loves Queens, but it's gone to EV Loves NYC now as we've grown. And so um, we had this idea, if we, if we created this love between two boroughs and we created this like bridge and this connection between the two boroughs, then people from the East Village would feel much more like they were responsible and taking responsibility for some of the people in, in the city that got the greatest needs in the pandemic. So that's really how we started out. And it snowballed very, very quickly. We started off in a very small cafe, just cooking kind of like 600 meals at a time. Um, we moved to Sixth Street Community Center. Uh, and uh, sometimes we cook like two, 3,000 meals in a day. Um, we now serve not just Queens, but 21 different organizations all over the five boroughs. We raised all the money ourselves for the project. We've had no government funding. Um, and we're coming up to cooking, uh, to having cooked 100,000 meals in the next couple of weeks. We're going to hit that 100,000 meal target. One of the reasons that we've been able to do this is because of uh, Nick, Laurie, and Cosmos, and the support that we've had from them. So I mentioned that we raised all the funds ourselves, but with the support of people like Nick and Laurie, who have really been out there, like not only enabling us to get support from, from Cosmos, so we also had some sponsorship from Cosmos. We were very lucky in that sense. We had like Vincenzo and other players turn up and volunteer for us. And we had Nick and Laurie bring us a stream of volunteers, literally like a huge percentage of the people that have volunteered for us and supported to cook with us and for us have been through the Cosmo Support Club as well. So what I really learned in this time and what I really saw is how communities can come together. I've literally like, you know, I don't know what everybody else's pandemic has been like, but I have seen the best of people in these times. You know, I really... You know, the one thing I'll say when I look back in this pandemic is the best of people have stepped forward. We've seen people step forward who've got like barely anything and give like share what they've got left. You know, we've seen people who have contacted us and said, look, I've lost my job, but I've got a credit card. I can put some food on that credit card for, for you guys. And we've literally seen like people step forward who've lost everything themselves, but are willing to volunteer and to stand up and to turn up every single week. Uh, and to put themselves in, in, in risk to be able to cook food for their fellow New Yorkers. So I would say like the pandemic has shown me the most beautiful side of New York, the most heart-centered side of New York. 
and Nick, Laurie, the Cosmos supporters team have been a huge, huge part of that. And, and you know, we're just extremely grateful to be exposed to this continuous stream of positivity and joy and to see all these community fridges popping up and to see all these great people stepping forward with heart and saying, do you know what, like, people think New York is this very kind of like every person for themselves and you know people think New York is a really selfish city actually got a, an incredibly good friend um who I was speaking to the other week and he was like oh but New York is all about like each person for themselves and I would turn around and say definitely not the New York that I've seen in the pandemic is about people coming together to support each other and and this kind of like thing that we're creating today is like a reflection of that. So thank you, Nick, Laurie, Vincenzo, all of the Cosmos supporters team and everybody that showed up to really have our backs in these times. Wow, amazing. That was so inspirational to hear. Thank you for sharing. Um, from here, I will pass it to Dr. Laurie Scherer. Go ahead. Okay, I did it. I unmuted myself. Hi, everyone. I am so excited that we could all be here in this little virtual family setting. My name is Dr. Lori Scherer. I am a psychologist who works mostly in schools and in community settings with the youth and their families that come along with them. And wow, I don't even know what I want to say. There's so much to say. First of all, the fact that we're able to be doing this tonight is just mind blowing to me. Uh, we have met so many phenomenal people in this past year and similar to what Sasha was saying, over the course of this pandemic, it's just shown me how strong, important, meaningful and impactful community is. You know, I think in the therapy world, in the education world, in just our current world, yeah we're very individualistic and we have been taught that we need to put ourselves first in order to get ahead and i think that what i'm taking away from this past year and being part of the glitter goddess collective especially it's showing me how much stronger we all are when we work together and when we can collaborate and bring all of our own passions and interests and magic into one place and i've gotten to see that and be a part of that firsthand with EV Loves Queens now NYC because it's expanded so much. My favorite thing every time I go is I ask people, how did you hear about this organization? And everyone says their friend told them. There are so few experiences we have like that now because everything is technological, but to be able to join something, to make an impact, to cook and get to meet new people because you heard about it from a friend and everyone there is a friend of a friend, it really makes it feel like a family. And that's how something like that lasts, in my opinion. We've gotten to work over the summer with Miss Denise and we with her help i she's been doing such great work in coney island they never closed during the pandemic they served that community and are going to continue to serve that community because they're part of that community you know this is such an important place here in new york city um it's iconic and it's one of the areas that has the highest amount of food insecurity you know miss denise her son minister tony are on the front lines, you know, risking their lives, risking um, just everything to help their neighbors. This is, that's inspiring to me. So when we were able to help out over the summer, what we did was we brought a little extra glitter to what they were already doing. Um, we invited a local artist, the Cosmos were able to raise money and support uh, the artist's work of painting a mural on the front gate that had to be closed because of the pandemic. And Miss Denise and I came up with an idea of, hey, the arts are so important. All the after school kids hadn't gotten to see each other, see each other since March, or this was August. And there's a lot that's next to the mission. We, Vincenzo, one of the helpers came by along with several other of the Cosmos supporters 
and the glitter goddesses, just different people that we know, part of our communities came and helped and cleared the lot out. And then we were able to have a really cool art and move an event for local kids, socially distanced, while the professional artist was painting over here, the kids were painting over there. And it was just, it's really, oh, gives me goosebumps just thinking about it. So like, that's the kind of stuff that gives me hope, right? In this day and age, that's the kind of stuff that fills me up and I want to help facilitate more of this. That's why we wanted to bring everyone here tonight. So I'm just, I'm so excited to have all these people, all these uh, trailblazers really in their communities. And I just wanna know more. I wanna know how can we keep doing this? How can we keep this momentum? And how can we draw more people in, right? Like, what do you, I'm gonna throw this out to anyone who's joining us. Like, what is your passion? What is, what drives you? What do you wanna be a part of? And how can we harness that? because I want this to be a space for everyone. Um, and last but not least, that's something that we're starting as well, like from the cosmos, uh, we're going to be starting a collective of sorts as well for soccer supporters, but more than just that, right? Not just soccer supporters, like you can support a team in the stands, you can support your community beyond the stands right like if soccer is paused let's recreate that narrative let's use all of that passion and drive and emotion uh the singing the dancing the the uh the banners like let's use all of that and capitalize on that so that we can really create change in our communities not just in the stands so that's my spiel Thank you so much for that, Lori. Um, I would love to invite our last panelist, Vincenzo Candela, to introduce himself. Hey, everyone. Uh, Vincenzo Candela here. I played for the Cosmos last year. Uh, it was a short and sweet time. Uh, sorry that I'm in a car right now. Uh, I've been moving around since I left New York for the last couple of months. And today I had planned to drive up from South Florida, North Carolina. So sorry about that. Um, but more importantly, you know, about me, I have played soccer professionally for the last eight years. I was raised in South Florida by a Colombian mom and an Italian father. Um, you know, they moved from Colombia at a young age, followed the American dream. Uh, and, you know, I fell in love with the sport. And more importantly, they taught me that the most important thing is to give back. Um, you know, I, I got to New York in the middle of the pandemic. And I was blessed to find such great people like Nick and Lori uh, and the rest of the Cosmo supporters who welcomed me with open arms. And right away, they, um, they showed me an, a community that was so open to helping others and you know, just making sure that everyone had everything that they needed. So from the moment that I got there, you know, I, I was blessed that Nick showed me opportunities which I could help, which I love to do. So I was able to support the Coney Island mission as uh, Lord, the lighthouse mission, as Lori said, and we helped clear that out. Um, I would go to Evie Loves as much as I could, um, you know, as, as we have a lot of busy weekends, but I try to go as much as I could. Uh, another thing that I did, which I truly enjoyed since uh, I'm an athlete, is that we did a 5K run, uh, which fundraised uh, money to try to end systematic racism in public schools. Uh, so I try to, you know, get the word out uh, to as many contests as I can and run and fundraise money for that. Um, and then this year, you know, this, this panel that we created and this community that we have, I just think it's so important, you know, some of us are artists, uh, some, some of us are community organizers, some of us are athletes, um, and we all bring people together. So I think it's very important to come together to come up with ideas where we can help people um, come up with ideas to help others. Um, you know, I, I, I think it was so great, you know, it was a very humbling experience for me also. Uh, to receive a community award uh, from the Cosmos supporters. Um, I, I, it was a very humbling and it's something that I, I was very grateful to receive. And I just want to continue to come up with ideas on, you know, how athletes, how supporters can come together and uh, continue to help the community in any way we can, because, you know, I'm, I might not have a lot of stuff to give, but I have a lot of effort and happiness that I want to share with other people. Um, and I want to try to continue to do that as an athlete and just try to use that platform that I have to, you know, make the world a better place for everyone. So, I mean, 
that's who I am. Uh, I want to continue to meet everyone here and try to uh, grow the community. Even if I'm not in New York, I still have a lot of connections there. And, you know, it's, it's such a wonderful place that I call home now. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm just happy to be a part of this panel now. Awesome, thank you for sharing. Um, and thank you for everyone to all of the panelists. Uh, this is just so warming to be in this this virtual space mm -hmm. together. Um, I feel so inspired right now and just like really good that this is all happening. Um, and it's really nice to meet some of you. Um, so curious, just on a larger, bigger picture, um, just we have some questions for y'all. What does the next steps look like for everyone? Um, how do you, want to move forward connecting with one another, connecting with each other and with this work together. Um, and anyone can go first. So one, one thing I think uh, moving forward, you know, just I, I would love for the, the, the athletic community and the soccer community to be able to come together and, you know, try to give much as much as possible to the community. Maybe, you know, athletes are, the teams focus a lot on doing soccer clinics and reaching out to the soccer community, but I would love for teams to get together more and try to support more organizations like EV Loves, like the Coney Island uh, Lighthouse Mission. I would love for entire teams to support these organizations because their organizations that deserve um, all this uh, advertising so they can get more recognition for the wonderful work that they did. So um, I want to try to vow to just try to get at, at least athletes to try to support those missions as much as possible, more than before at least. I think that's such an amazing idea, Vincenzo, because I think we know that especially for kids and probably grown up kids too, uh, athletes are our heroes, right? Athletes are what we all aspire to be. So I know having you there was thrilling for all the grown ups, you know, and just imagine kids out in the community because that's like who I work with mostly is youth getting to see their favorite athletes, you know, in the flesh, doing community service, doing outreach, making things happen. I think that's such a great point. Thank you, Larry. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you so much, Lori. Thank you, Vincenzo, for that. Um, is there anyone else who has ideas about next steps for themselves and for their organizations, um, ways that they could see? Yeah, Sasha. Yeah, so so obviously, like for the past year, we've been in firefighting mode, you know, like our thing, you know, when like people are in survival, you meet them, they're in survival. But we do have like bigger visions to be able to, as New York starts to get back on its feet, like what can we do to be part of that? So one of the things we've talked about as an organization is, can we raise some like real funds so that we can get then get some chefs who lost their jobs in the pandemic back on their feet and back to work serving people and, and doing this work like uh, as paid work. So we help them get back on their feet and then they help other people with the, with the food they're cooking. So I think for us, the vision is, to get out of the firefighting mode, I mean, obviously, like New York has still got a huge insecurity challenge, a food insecurity challenge. And, you know, we want to be addressing that. But at the same time, we want to be helping people get back up on their feet as we address that, too. So that's one of the visions that we've had moving forward is that we we make this more than just a, a sticking plaster thing, you know, that's that's like like sticking a, a little plaster on a wound and look at how we can use it like. Um, to create a more integral thing that's like helping New York get back up on its feet on so many different levels. So that's one of the visions that we've got as we move forward with Evie Loves. Um, I would love to offer up the opportunity for um, Miss Denise 
um, and Minister Tony to maybe talk about what y'all envision also for, for next steps for yourself as well. Right. Yeah, um, uh, I've discussed a couple of um, visions that I, that I have, um, a couple of them with Lori, but my main focus is on uh, the children and the youth. Um, through the pandemic, they were actually home in front of a computer, you know, consistently. Um, so I feel building back up New York will require involving the children, the young children, and the youth. Um, my vision is to, to have them be more involved with what's going on in New York and in America alone. Um, my vision is so big, sometimes I can't even really address it the way I want to address it, because um, I'm more of like a hands-on person, you know, um, not a woman of many words. I think it's a woman that likes to work. So um, if you can understand that, you know, um, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at a vision toward the next generation. Like, what can we do? understand to um to open up their minds to something bigger especially in low income areas um we are a nonprofit organization so as i said um donations and all of those things help us but we're limited and um our youth and children are limited because we don't have the resources uh so as we're building and trying to get uh new york back on its feet um, because of this pandemic, we should try to involve the children. What can we do for them and the youth? Because they are our next generation. So I just want to leave leave you with that. Yes, yes. It is it's all about um, the children. The children are the future. Um, that was great, Ma. Um, and we'll talk more on that. Yeah. We'll talk more on that. Because we're trying to get the after-school program built back up. Uh, because of COVID and the, the regulations that this um, state has with the school, and we 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 waiting on them. I mean, we ready to open up tomorrow with the after school program, uh, but we 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 waiting on the government um, as far as that goes. We seeing what the school going to do, and then once we see the the structure they have, then we'll follow right behind them. Um, as for myself, um, I, I got this vision of this coat drive. I had it last year. We didn't have it last year because of COVID, but I had hundreds and hundreds of coats, and I still got more. Uh, me and Nick was talking about it. We was going to come down. We was going to be pretty big. But um, Mom would tell you it was really nice coat. Some had tags on it. And it went in like minutes. It was gone. She was putting it out. I had it all. We had it all in the back. And um, people, and when it gets cold in Coney Island, it gets cold. And, um, you know, my thing, I want to help people in Coney Island, of course, all over the world. But I got to take it home first. And, uh, you know, they need this. So I'm, I'm going to do it again this year. Um, I'm collecting coats. So if you guys have any coats that you want to donate, um, I know it's pretty early, um, but it's coming. You know, winter will be here with a blink of our eye. Fall will be here with a blink of our eye. And uh, we're going to do that as well again. I'm going to be hosting that again as well, a co-drive for the people, for kids, um, young adults and adults. All right? We have all sizes and um, sleeping bags, anything to help. Homeless always come to the Lighthouse Mission. They come for food. They come for clothes. They come for sneakers. And we have all of that. Right now, it's been a little bit of, of a shortage because of the circumstances um, that we're dealing with today. But um, I believe that things are going to open up soon. And, um, and we're going to, we, we just here. And, and we need you guys. And um, we here. What's the goddess the glitters that came out that helped us in the summer? They were amazing. The kids were. Yeah, that was the first time they got together yeah, in months. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> you know. So even dancing and all those things, you know, we need to bring to these low income communities because that's the lack here. Mm -hmm. That's right. And if anybody got any ideas that they want to brainstorm with, with um, coming down to the mission and bringing the kids together and, and you know, bringing excitement and light back to their lives, you know, these kids is locked in. You know, can't really do anything. So um, if you have any ideas that you guys have been thinking about or brainstorming about or coming to Coney Island and doing something for the kids, something nice, um, it, it, you know, be open to it. I think I think I'm done. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for sharing. Um, I am curious 
Um, I don't know if Nick is on this call as well, but I'm curious to hear like what's the the story of the Cosmos su supporters? How did y'all get started? How did you get to where you are today? And then if you have capacity to to add on to it, like what are you envisioning moving forward? Um, what do you, what are your next steps in your community work? He's having technical difficulties, so I'll take this one a little bit. So while I am new to the supporter world, um, what spoke to me is how similar it is to the artist collective, Look at Our Goddesses. Um, and I have learned that in the supporter world of soccer, more internationally, that part of supporting the sport isn't just supporting like the literal team, it's supporting the club, which is ultimately the community. So giving back, doing mutual aid, volunteering, raising money, fundraising, all of that um, is done in tan, not in tandem, at the same time as supporting the athletes, right? Supporting the sport. So that's been extremely inspirational. I think my personal goal would be to create a community center. I think all of these things belong under one roof, right? We need to be training our youth not to just get good at a sport, right? But also to grow those muscles of contributing and gratitude and um, collaboration, right? If we can do that in addition to dance classes and art classes or in therapy groups, having that all together so that anyone in a community can access it from the youngest to the oldest or eldest rather um intergenerational groups like i think that's what needs to be happening and that's something that there's a hole right now because sports were basically I mean, like a lot of other things were put on pause so um i think it's this is such a ripe time to start thinking outside of that box and pulling the people in who have such passion that's what i loved going to the games you see this passion you see this fire literally <laughs> and figuratively right there's smoke there's there's banners there's uh la banda playing amazing music and and chants and songs and lyrics all this stuff going on and it's to support this team that's on the field and then i want that fire to continue out past the parking lot you know like i want that to come into our communities and so what the glitter goddesses are doing what uh the coney island lighthouse is doing what evie loves queens ah uh, evie loves nyc is doing that's all happening and like how can we pull that all together and just get more support right i love that they're called supporters not fans like yeah we need to support each other so how can we do that so in my mind ideally in the future it's a brick and mortar community club center that can have all these things. Um, right now, I don't know, I'm turning to you guys as the experts. So like, what do you want? What can we do? What should we do next? Like now that we started this conversation, that's what I wanna know. So I don't think that really answered your question, Anthony. And um, I did my best. <laughs> No, I think that was great. Um, and I'm curious to hear like if anyone has a response to that. Um, any thoughts or ideas in response to that? And I'm assuming, Anthony, anyone here is welcome to join in this conversation. So this isn't just to the panelists. I know everyone is often hiding behind uh, screens, but if you have any thoughts, that's really what we're here for, to start and uh, brainstorm all together, because more minds are better than less. Mm. Thank you for that. And that's okay if not, or if anyone has thoughts, definitely put them in the chat if that's available. I had another question I'm curious about. I, I know, like, you know, um, Minister Tony brought up, like, you know what it's like to be low on uh, resources at, in such a tough time and vincenzo mm -hmm. arriving like in the middle of the pandemic 
what like in community activism and it, like when things get really exhausting, does anyone have advice for when things just feel low or hopeless or like when you feel like giving up in your work, do you have any advice or um, thoughts that you would share to folks? And I'd open that question to the panelist or to anyone here on the call. Um, yeah, I could start a little on that. I mean, you know, we uh, we noticed in the middle of the pandemic, especially coming to New York, that there, there was a lot of people that were suffering. And, um, you know, athletes like myself as well, we, we had a hard time because, you know, not, not like others, but we were forced to be in a place where we are not accustomed to. And it is mentally daunting. But I think one, one thing that is important is just to make sure that um, it's, it's just to know that you, you, you have to, you know, power through things. And, you know, it, it's happened in my life before that maybe you have to take a step backwards and then take two steps forwards. Um, there's always going to be a light at the end of the tunnel and you just have to continue to stay positive, which in whatever circumstance that you find yourself in, um, you know, good days are going to come. They're going to be bad days, but there's going to be a lot of positives to come away with. You just, you have to learn from every experience that you, you've, you've been put into. Um, it's just, you know, and being thankful. I think, you know, being thankful, giving back to people, um, you know, building good karma. It's, 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 it's always just about helping the community. And I, I think little things like that go a very long way. And it's just, you know, making sure that, not only you're happy, but helping others to be happy as well. Um, I think, you know, positivity is massive, you know, in tough times, be positive and things will work out your way. Um, I, I always like that, you know, on the field and off the field, it's just, it's very important to be positive And, you know, if things feel like they aren't going your way, just continue to keep pushing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, dealing with the pandemic at the Pony Island Lighthouse Mission, I was one of the ones on the front line, wasn't many. We were feeding over two or 300 people. Believe it when I tell you they were out there for food because the grocery stores and all those things were closed. They had relatives that were actually passing away. In the mix of all of this, we offered prayer. I prayed for most of them, um, encouraged them and uplift them. Um, spiritually and physically, you know, and mentally, physically by, you know, helping them with the need of food, you know, spiritually, you know, uh, just giving them, their, giving them hope with the word of God, because as I explained to you, I am a believer, you know, um, in, in Christ Jesus. That's my belief. And I believe that that helped most of the families that were on the line. We even had children out there. There was children out there on, on those lines, along with the parents, because school was out, they didn't have no one to keep the children. So, you know, they felt as though just was no hope. And, you know, we had a mural on the wall that was painted by two other artists in 2018. Looking at that mural was more than enough to help them to realize there is hope, you know, and we have a scripture above that mural, Nick and um, the Cosmos got money together and got two painters to paint that on our lot in our community. People had something good to look at as I spoke to them. You know, it, you know, it's 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 about prayer. Prayer is very up uplifting. That's just my view, you know, um as a woman of faith. That is what I use as a tool to help those that were very discouraged during that time period. Um and and you know and God didn't fail me. Because, you know, they come back, some of them are coming back now, thank you so much, you know. And they're getting back on their feet surely, but slowly, but uh, the donations and everything that Nick and Lori brought to the mission at a time when we were in dire need was very helpful, and I am forever grateful to them for that. Um, Lori heard my cry, like, about that to school. So, my God, I haven't seen them in so long. And we said, and we just started talking, and we came up with this idea together. So, it's all about faith and prayer faith and prayer, you know, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, yeah, of course, I'm 100% agreement. You know, we believe God supplies all our needs. And um, we, we went through a little time where, you know, we were a little short on things. And out of nowhere, you know, grants started coming in, food distribution started coming in by the hundreds. And we was able to be able to feed the people that actually really need it. So that's what we do. We, we, like um, somebody just said, I don't know who it was, but, you know, Miss Denise was just out there through entire, the whole entire pandemic. And that's the key is just never giving up and never quitting, never fighting. Even when things do get a little bit, of, a little slow, you know, you just, you know, give what you can and just, just wait for God to bless you with more. And they came in and, and now they out there, lines around the block. <laughs> lines is almost around two blocks. And um, the food is there. Everything is there. And the kids just keep fighting. Keep fighting, keep pushing, never giving up, and keep praying. I think the thing for us as well, like one of the things that, um, and I totally second every, everything that you guys say there, and the, the faith is, is, is a huge part of it, but also like the, the love, you know, and to, to really like, um, one of the things that we've really tried to do as an organization, not just for the people that we're cooking food for, but for the people that come and volunteer for us, is to create a place that feels like a safe place of love among, amongst this crazy pandemic. And so it means that people that come to volunteer for us might come, they might have some um, challenges of their own, like mental health challenges, emotional challenges, all the challenges that the pandemic has brought for people. But we tried to create this like really safe haven, this place where people feel that they're loved, they're accepted, they can they can contribute. That's accessible for them, you know, like the the steps that they can they can take to be able to do that. And then just like to pour into that, into everything we're doing, like a whole lot of love. So everybody from the people that we serve to the people that come to us is treated with the utmost dignity and respect uh, and the utmost care. And I think that's been like a very integral part of, of what we've built really, because it's very easy to, to get cold when you're doing this kind of work, you know, and it would be very easy to just get very mechanical and just tick boxes and like achieve numbers. But I think the deeper thing that we're all talking about really here, all of us collectively, the theme that runs through is doing everything with a lot of heart you know, and doing everything with a lot of connection and doing everything with a lot of respect and, and care. And I think that's what's, as I'm hearing everybody speak, that's the thread that's really run, running through it for me, for everybody. So just really wanted to speak to that and acknowledge that, that, you know, we're not just talking about like achieving goals, like achieving numbers, ticking boxes, getting things done. We're talking about like serving from the heart and just really wanted to touch in on that and, and highlight that. I love what you just said, Sasha, about the not, um, not achieving goals. Like I, I, that, I think that's something that stands out for me for everyone here, right? From Miss Denise to you to even Vincenzo, like just showing up without having an end game in mind. It's like, you, you don't know where anything's coming from next. And I have seen firsthand both you and Miss Denise make it work, right? Like there have been weekends where I know Mama had said that you guys ran out of money and you didn't have enough to make the meal for that weekend. And yet somehow you were cooking by Sunday. Like, I don't know what went on between that conversation and the Sunday, but you made it work, right? Same thing with Miss Denise and Tony when it came to the coats, when it comes to uh, their turkey drive, right? Over Thanksgiving. Like, I just, it's, it's truly remarkable. And I don't know if you have the answer to this, but I'm so curious how you do make those moments work. Of course. Uh, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I think, I think it's uh, like Mr. Nee nice said, like the, the faith, you know, like um, the, there's a, a, a common thread again, that runs through here, just like this, this sense of like not being defeated, uh, even when it seems like there's going to be no resources, you know, because because this is a very resourceful city, you know, it's, it, we, we live in a, a city that's got a lot of resources. So just like knowing that and having the faith that some of those resources somewhere will come through and just keeping that like optimistic heart and open spirit, even when everything's running out and just being able to also say to people, do you know what guys, like, 
we need help. You know, we need, we need some resources here and being able to stand up when you do need help and ask for it. Um, and just then wait with an open heart. It's just been amazing for me time and time again. Like there were so many times where we just had enough money for next week's food and, and we didn't know how it was going to work. And then we get the money for next week's food. And I think it is just that like faith, love, open hearted, like, faith in humanity that's that's the driving fuel behind all of what we we're all doing here i think thank you so much i am at a loss for words uh you know i'm trying to think of questions to ask everyone and i'm just truly inspired to see this community at work um, and to, to really see this entire community coming together from so many different areas. Uh, Providence is a significantly smaller city um, than, than New York City. And so to be able to see so many different representations of a city, people coming together um, and being represented and, and sharing, you know, that common goal that you were talking about, Sasha, of really putting things, you know, putting your heart into everything that you're doing. That is the drive behind, um, you know, wanting to provide for our our communities. Um, my family is from from Mali in West Africa, and we have a, a proverb that says "Doni doni kononin ben yakada," and it means "little by little the bird builds its nest." And so, you know, this I'm really seeing this conversation as a foundation for building that nest, um, and that every single person that is here, um, whether you are on the panel providing, you know, obviously your expertise, or you're in the audience just listening, um, like y'all are the branches that are making this nest up of community community work. Um, and so it's, again, it's so beautiful to be able to be a part of this conversation, to sit back, um, like, like Vincenzo was saying, this is a moment for me to, to sit back um, and to watch and listen to other organizers talk um, about how they create art together and community. And so I'm feeling very grateful um, to just even be listening to what is going on right now. I'm feeling a little like mind blown and flabbergasted. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to, to say that and to name that. Um, and also I want to invite um, the audience who is here, who is present to add your branches to this conversation. Um, going back to that proverb, y'all are also a part of this community. Um, so if there is anyone who is in our audience who would like to ask any questions to add anything to our conversation, um, I invite you to um, to write questions in the chat, but also uh, if you are feeling called, since you are a part of this conversation, um, to come off mute and to share. Um, we would love to, to give you all that opportunity to join this conversation with us. Um, I have some curiosity that I would love to kind of bring to the conversation about um, about athletics and arts coming together. I think as a as a, a queer young boy before I knew that I was queer, um, I knew that I was not doing boyhood the way other people expected me to, and so I experienced athletics and arts as two very separate things and two very separate ways of being. Um, and it's taken me a long time to heal from that. And I still think I get tight around sports because um, there's that little boy inside of me that's really nervous about being put down or being shut down or being told that I'm not doing it right. Um, so I'm curious about like, how can the arts and sports athletics um, come into some kind of conversation with each other that feels generative and nourishing and healing for people that feel like they can't participate in one or the other. So I know I have some ideas, but I'm curious if Vincenzo, who is an athlete, has any thoughts on that, although I don't know if you're able to speak right now. Um, it, uh, that's a wonderful question. And, um, I, it's, I, I mean, I have some ideas. I would just, I, I, I think it would be great to put them together. And I, 
I've, I have always seen um, the similarities between art and the athletics, but to bring them together, I think that would be great, especially in, in that side of things. Um, I don't know. I, I think that's a great question and something we can definitely discuss to, even more to come together. Um, but I don't know. That's, that's a great idea. Um, I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's a great question, though. Okay, I know what my first idea is, uh, Ben and all. One of the things that stood out the most to me, because again, I'm not, I wouldn't call myself an athlete or uh, a soccer supporter um, before recently. And one of the things that stood out to me are the crazy banners that soccer supporters make. And I have learned, and I'm really hoping that Patrick Inferna joins in in this conversation, maybe to add to it just a slight shout out um, and pressure uh, to answer the question, but you can, there are, uh, oh God, I, I can't remember what they're called, but they're giant banners that go across stadiums, like entire stadiums, hundreds of people long that uh, have social activism quotes on them uh, to inspire the players to bring more causes to light. Um, Oh, wait, are we getting a photo? Um, so that is one of the things that I would love for artists and communities and budding artists to be able to join in that way, you know, not only just creating the banner, but then being able to bring that into a stadium or a sports arena or whatever the new version of this is gonna look like, maybe it's virtual, I don't know. Uh, and having that craft be recognized and lauded and seen and heard. Um, there's a lot of music playing that happens, you know, it's almost like marching band from back in the day. But uh, so yeah, I think there's a lot of opportunities. And I agree that I think a lot of us as a dance and drama nerd from high school days, there's a lot of division that is notorious to athletics and i think and honestly even in the arts world you know that happens too so i think crossing those bridges and blending those things could be really powerful um also personally i think the cosmos should have more uh lgbtq plus nights you know there are themes that have, can brought in, bring in the community uh would love to have a drag night i think that would be epic you know, I think there's a lot of fun stuff that could be happening that honestly isn't happening right now. There are, from what little research I've been doing, there are some leagues and uh, teams and like intramurals that are devoted to um, just queer groups of athletes, you know, to make it more of a safe space. And I think that's amazing. And that's reflecting back on us that we need to do a better job of creating an inclusive space so that whoever wants to be part of that can be, right? It shouldn't have to be so divisive. Um, just kind of as a response to, to, both, to both things, I know I'm not a professional athlete, uh, but I was an athlete in high school and I also was, um, was dancing throughout high school as well. And I think something that feels really important to me as both of those experiences sort of unfold in my mind is that like they were communities in themselves, you know, that there was, uh, my team was my community, my dance company was my dance family. And so I think a lot of that is sort of like the way that we socialize to believe that they are separate things when at, at heart, you know, they might be different physicalities um, between art and, uh, and, you know, athletics. And I think like at the end of the day, you know, I really feel connected to the fact that they are communities um, and you know, in itself, just with different contexts. And so I think just even the education around that, um, you know, that athletics is this, arts is this, um, is something that we as a community can be a part of creating that change of scaling it back on the, you know, the macro level of just being like, these are communities in itself. Um, and, and, you know, starting there as the foundation rather than defining that going into it.
Mm. Would love to open the floor um, again to other questions that we may have. If you haven't checked out this uh, Cosmos banner yet in the chat, I strongly suggest it is a crazy situation and I looks very exciting. Might have to go to a Cosmos game once things are okay for us to do that and safe. I wonder if I might um, just sort of continuing about uh, community. Um, I'm really glad to be here. Thank you for Lori for inviting me. Um, I know a couple people on this call, but most of you are new members of my community. Um, but I think um, as was just said, um, community to me is the thing that the arts and that athletics have in common that they bring communities together and I think that communities are determined by their members and I think that the members have a responsibility we all have a responsibility as members of a community to sort of determine what kind of a community it's going to be and I think if we look around the world um, or in this country at the sorts of communities that come around uh, come together around soccer for example I think we see very different kinds of communities. We see communities um, that can be hateful and toxic. You know, there are communities, there are uh, soccer ultras groups that are violent, that are uh, fascist, um, that are proudly fascist. And then I do think that we see communities in the world where the ultras come together uh, or the fans, the supporters groups come together. Um, really to do things for the community and to step in sometimes um, where local governments don't um, in the way that I think a lot of the folks on this panel um, have talked about doing, right? Uh, when you're a member of a community, you never stop and you don't wait for somebody else uh, to do something. That's real. I appreciate that um, framing that you have there too. And, and just how when we are in this sense of community, there are folks who have specific roles. And this reminds me a lot of, um, you know, like Aussie's framing of Doni Doni, the, the, the West African proverb. Um, it reminds me of what we see in nature and how pieces, you know, how we can look to nature to, to take on inspiration in what we're doing, especially in our community work. Um, so when we're talking about like branch by branch, little by little, the nest is being made, it reminds me of um, fractals. That This idea comes from um, Adrian Marie Brown in Emergent Strategy, which I think Ben um, introduced me to first. And just like how the small, very small pieces really reverberate outward and echo outward and make huge differences that we sometimes don't even recognize. Um, and I think this is just one example of like we're seeing smaller instances of this community work and seeing it come together in this way reverberating outward and out into communities that in different communities in different places it's this is the work of nature and this is the work that doesn't necessarily have to be nature outside of the human world this is our community work this is that common thread that we're talking about so i really appreciate that framing um mm -hmm. and loved what you said there um, so we're coming up on our end time. I would still love to, before um, hopping off and, and taking some uh, some closing breaths with everyone, if there's any last comments, questions from anyone in the audience, uh, we'd love to hear that before we close. And even from the panelists. Yeah, from the panelists. Well, this is not the best closing thought, but I am going to put into the chat a quick feedback survey. We would love if you didn't get a chance to share your ideas with us today um, and you're the kind of person like me who needs to think a little bit, I'm going to put that into the chat so that you can give us some feedback on what worked or what didn't work for this setting and any ideas that you have and or if you'd like to be more involved in this conversation going forward as we start to build this Cosmos Supporters Collective to kind of create that community 
that uh, that we want to see, you know, in the stands and outside of the stands. So here it is. Awesome. Yeah, and I'd also love to hear like any final thoughts, um, even gratitudes from from the panelists, where you're at now, what you're thinking, any last things you want to say. Just thank you all for putting this together and for bringing people together. You know, it can be um, challenging to be out there, like continuously doing things. And it's great to stop, take a moment, reflect, connect with other people who've got different ideas. It just becomes the fuel for, for the next piece. So thank you all for, for being the fuel for that. Mm -hmm. and, yes. Um, yes. And um, I would like to say thank you to all the panelists and especially Nick and um, Lori for putting this together. Um, I want to leave with this. Um, I want everybody to remember that we are one race, the human race. Okay. Um, and remember when you do good, good comes back to you in ways you can't imagine. So, um, you know, we just want to spread the love no matter who you are. And right. we are grateful for each and every one of you and what each and every one of you guys do, you know, to help others, because that's what my heart is built on, reaching out to help others. Amen. Okay. So if there aren't any other closing thoughts, um, again just so grateful to take this moment to like you said sasha stop take a moment reflect see how we want to move forward um this has been so inspiring to me and i'm sure that i can speak to um through the audience with that as well um as we close i will just shout out as we're in now the spring season happy spring equinox um house of glitter just released a sound bath um in honor of the spring equinox um, it's available on all music platforms um, so we're just inviting our communities to especially community organizers to take a moment of rest take a walk um, listen to a guided meditation put your headphones on take in these healing vibrations um, and again that's available at houseofglitter.org so before we close out i just want to say that you know at the end of zoom calls it's really uh easy to kind of like linger on and, and give gratitudes and, and thoughts afterwards. Um, but just to let this all settle in, I'll invite us to, after our breaths, just hang up and take a moment for yourself. Take a moment in silence, maybe journal a little bit. Think about how all of this has inspired you to move forward. Think about how you might want to connect with folks on this call, um, connect with the community work that's happening, um, support the community work that's happening. Um, yeah, just really want to drive that forward as after we take our breaths and hang up. Um, just take a moment for yourself, mm. listen to your breath, um, and journal some things down. Mm. And if you haven't seen it yet, um, I know Lori has been putting in some links here for all of the organizations that are present. Um, so please take a look to dive into the work um, and to support the um, amazing organizers that we have here and individuals that we have here working for greater organizations. Um, once again, I know that the two of us are going to like hang up on this call and be like, whoa, like what happened? Um, and uh, again, feeling a lot of gratitude for this opportunity and to be a part of this larger community with y'all. Um, so yeah. Yes. Okay. Let's get into our closing breaths. I'll invite us all again to find a comfortable seat. If you're not seated, open the shoulders, open up the chest, maybe roll the shoulders back. And I'll invite you to place your right hand on your heart and your left hand on your belly. Close your eyes or find a soft gaze. And just tap into the natural breath for a moment. To really take in and process um, the last hour and 15 minutes here together, I'll invite us to send the breath into the belly, to the solar plexus, 
that bundle of nerves that allow us to take action. And will guide us into a few closing breaths collectively. First, a breath again for all of our individual ancestors who bring us into this virtual space and into this work together. Breathing in and out. A breath for opening our hearts and for building a larger community together. Breathing in. A breath for all of the seeds that were planted today, knowing that if they're nurtured, that they will grow. Breathing in. And out. And a breath of gratitude for the individual branches that we are bringing to make this beautiful, supportive nest. Breathing in and release. The loving light in us bows down to the loving light in you all. Thanks again. Thank you so much, everyone. Peace and love. Bye. And a big thank you to our fabulous moderators, Asi and Anthony, aka AM. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the Cosmos supporters.